Welcome back to Green Thumb Chronicles. This is Marnie Thompson with Understanding Ag. As you can see, um, it's not green anymore. Um, it's November here in Montana and about 20 degrees outside, but we can start preparing for next year's garden. And today we're gonna talk about making compost. So at Understanding Ag, we really preach that we wanna work with nature and minimize inputs. Compost is considered an input, something that may cost money and or time, but it is beneficial to jumpstart your soil health journey with compost and add the microbiology through compost to your soil. So I am going to use the Johnson Sioux compost method, which is considered a static compost. The benefit to static compost is there is no disturbance, you're not deterring that. And the benefit to that is it makes your compost more mycorrhizae fungi friendly. Uh, mycorrhizae fungi are the biology in the soil that your soil lacks the most. Um, so when we use this um, compost, we could add mycorrhizae fungi to your soil. Mycorrhizae fungi is the biology that attaches itself to the roots and brings food and nutrients and water to the plant. So it's very important um, in good, healthy soil. So this is my Johnson Sioux bioreactor, obviously. It is small um, for my small garden, but there are farmers that are creating um, bioreactors that are big, large enough to put compost um, on large acres, 1,000 to 5,000 acres at a time. Um, this bioreactor has, um, it's on wheels, which makes it uh, fairly easy to move around. Um, it has a plastic covering here. Um, just to keep, this is where we will put the compost. You want air movement. You don't want um, compost to become anaerobic. Anaerobic, it doesn't have enough air and that benefits the not so good biology. That's the biology that we don't want. So at the bottom of our bioreactor is plywood with holes in it. We will be watering our compost throughout the winter and that enables the water just to drain through and not sit in there. There again, if we had, if we didn't have the holes in the bottom, the water would sit, create an anaerobic environment, which would benefit the not so good biology. So we line our plastic here with landscape fabric um, that's porous. You just, you can go get that at any Home Depot. This is just another color of the landscape fabric. Now let's talk about our recipe for compost. You need 50 to 70% carbon material. So that would be something like corn stalks, straw, um, or wood chips. And then you need 20 to 30% green material, which could be alfalfa hay, grass hay, and manure. A common recipe that's used in the Johnson Sioux Bioreactors includes 60% corn stalks, 20% grass clippings, 10% horse manure, and 10% wood chips. You do not want to use sawdust. Sawdust, again, makes the compost anaerobic and creates an environment for the not so good biology. So my recipe this year, um, because of some great farmers in Haver that gave me the mixture this year, it is 50% uh, wood chips, 20% cover crop. It was a cover crop diverse mix that was baled. Um, some alfalfa hay, some manure, which is cow, chicken, and horse manure, and some grass straw. Here's what my mixture looks like. You can see the wood chips. Those are pretty big wood chips. There again, you don't want sawdust. Here's some cover crop species in there. You can see the brown stuff is the manure, some grass hay, and alfalfa hay. All right, now we're ready to make our compost. So I have like a wheelbarrow, this is a little lawn trailer. I put the compost in here. It's very important that we get the compost wet and it is good and soaked through. So I'm gonna put all the compost in here and then we will add our water. So this year I am adding a inoculant. Uh, my farmer friends from Haver gave me some compost from last year and I'm going to mix that in here as our compost inoculant. That isn't totally necessary every year. Last year I didn't do it, but this year it is my added ingredient. Now add water to our compost. 
Be careful where you get your water. It cannot be chlorinated. So today um, we went and got water out of the Missouri River. Um, and we will add this to our compost. We will mix it around and then we will let it sit to make sure all of the compost is good and wet. Now we get to stir our compost and make sure that it is all wet, which takes a, a while uh, because it soaks it right in. You need to make sure that when you grab the compost that you can squeeze um, water out of it and then you know your compost is ready to get started. We have the compost good and soaked. We're putting it into our reactor to get the compost started. You'll notice that we have this plastic tube in the middle and that is to um, increase airflow there again, making so that it doesn't turn anaerobic. All right, we have our compost made and we're ready to start cooking. Here's our compost thermometer. We'll put it in the compost and it's reading about 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So we will check this every day. Um, and then after it cools down, we will put some red wigglers in it and start the compost ma making. So tune in as we monitor the temperature of the compost as it goes through the process. Day three, it's up to 80 degrees. So I made the compost on Thursday. Today is Monday morning and look at the temperature. It's working. All right, the compost got up to about 138, around 130 or 140 is what you want to see the compost get out for a couple days. And that's what it did here. So my compost is ready. Um, it's still at 118 and when it cools down, I will put the red wigglers in and we'll get our compost ready for next summer. Thanks for tuning in to Green Thumb Chronicles.